Hello, I'm Joseph, and today I want to talk about a project I started three years ago and started to kick back up recently. Um, and the reason why I kicked it up recently is because I finally was able to get a Windows version of this running. Um, the biggest hindrance that uh, I had with this was that I just couldn't get Windows. It, and that kind of defeat the whole purpose of the majority of the lion's share of people that I interact with are working on Windows machines. Um, so if they wanted to create a game in PHP, uh, it would be relatively difficult considering they would have to somehow figure, figure out how to compile this, which means compiling PHP as well and so on and so forth. So uh, I offer uh, a DLL and I'm working on an installer. Um, but uh, yeah, so the installer would technically have its own um, you know, program files thing here, and it'll I'll rename this to like a different uh, executable other than php.exe. Um, uh, just because this would probably interact with if you had an existing path that had PHP in it, I don't get confused. So, you know, that's where that's at. So I'll eventually have an installer, but for now, uh, there's just a DLL. And if you don't know how that works, um, in uh, let me get this back up here. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Uh, in, in PHP, when you download it for Windows, um, you have to toss it into the, your ext directory for PHP, and then you have to edit the uh, PHP INI, and let's see if I can open this up as well. And then in your PHP INI, you look up, you have to um, set up the extension to be uh, load it in there. If not, then you got to pass it through, uh, through command line. Um, and if you did, haven't already done this, and you've never done this for PHP on Windows, then there's another thing you got to do up here, which is set the, uh, the extension path somewhere up here. Ext. <coughs> yeah, so you have to enable this as well, and it's just a couple of steps. So having an installer, have that automatically set up for you is the next best step. But for now, I'm just offering the DLL for you. So you don't, this way you don't have to compile anything. Um, so yeah, um, the other thing is that if you don't know what Raylib is, it is kind of like a generic library for programming games. Um, you can make your own game engine in it and if you want to. Um, it's really kind of more low level than an actual game engine, so you may run into some difficulties. For example, if you want like that sprite here to be walking around, then you have to do all the uh, programming for that to get this sprite to animate and switch around between tiles and stuff like that. So. Um, that's where that's at. And um, while I'm the first person to have started this, I'm not the only person working on it. Um, there is two other people working on this extension for, for PHP. Um, this one is using PHP C++. If you know what that is, it's just an easier way to write extensions. Um, the And they auto-generate the binding, so they're not doing anything remotely close to the amount of work that I'm trying to do. Uh, so here's the binding, it says auto-generate it. Um, there are some limitations that they have specifically uh you can't call some of the void star functions in c because it doesn't know how to handle that um but uh, if they update it to 3.0 I, I don't know maybe maybe it might be worth using um raylib 3.0 that is because that's going to be released in the next couple of days the other one is uh, foreign interfaces. So PHP 7.4 introduced foreign interface extensions that you can now program against. So you can load up a DLL or .so um, and call from them dynamically. Uh, there is a performance hit, and there's also some other limitations that foreign interfaces don't solve just yet. Um, but it's just another person that worked on that. OK, so going back to mine, um, next thing you would probably be asking is like, OK, well, why PHP? And I just have like a uh, kind of a quick rundown of things. There is multi-threading, so if you want to do that, you can. There's a project called Parallel uh, by the same person that wrote pthreads for PHP. Uh, super simple, basically everything that's marked as runtime or every class that is runtime uh, is effectively a thread. So they create one thread, they put in something in that thread and it's echoing out to the console. Uh, it's a shared nothing, so none of the classes are shared between any of the threads, but there's ways to share information if you needed to as well. Uh, PHP is too slow, so I can show you a quick example here. This is a uh, node binding for, for Raylib. There's a bunch of bindings for Raylib, Go, Rust, uh, C Sharp, so on and so forth. But uh, once you get to about uh, 10,000, there is uh, about, uh, when I was running, it was about like 14 to 15 frames per second. Um, 
And so this is Node.js binding. It's using the native binding, so it's C++ code to compile into Node and stuff like that. Um, so that's where that's at. The one I have with me on PHP, effectively the same code, so I'm not doing any further optimizations here. Uh, it's able to get a bit higher, well, same amount, 10,000. But you're, uh, okay, let me try this again. About 10,000. Okay, so you're getting a couple more frames. And when I was running this prior, it was like 25 frames versus um, uh, the 15. So uh, you obviously you're getting like 10 plus frames at least uh, difference. And so that kind of defeats the bird. Like, well, yeah, it's not necessarily slow. Uh, no, JS is just as slow as, as PHP as Python. Uh, it's, you know, not that big of a deal. Object going to stuff, uh, PHP's come a long way. So I'm gonna show you one of my stubs I have here for PHP itself. Um, go back here. Yeah, so this, this is just um, some of the stub information here. There's obviously uh, typed information for it. PHP 7.4 now allows type property, so I could technically, rather than having a uh, property here, I can say uh, public float x. In prior uh, PHP versions, you could not do that. You'd have to do uh, the PHP doc comments to even try to get inf any information on that. Um, but now you can do that through that as well. Um, the reason why I'm using a property still is because there are some that are read only, like the camera is only read only, the image is read only, because you can't change them directly. Um, textures and images, you kind of have to go through other functions to to change. Um, garbage collection, um, this one may not be known, but if you've ever run like a, a tight loop for hours or days, eventually it's going to crawl or slow, a slow end, and it will be spending 100% CPU on doing garbage collection. So 7.3 fixed this, um, and there's now like a 10x improvement on garbage collection in general as well. Uh, so it's greatly improved, uh, much faster, and can run, uh, hopefully indefinitely. Uh, I've not run into an issue where it was prior when I was running like PHP 5.6 and stuff like that. The The last one is kind of just a comment that I made towards kind of the issues that you have with using Python or Node.js is that there's a way to get code reloading to happen. Like you can just re-import the, the module or the library that you're working in to get the newer information. Um, in, in PHP, that's not really possible. Prior was RunKit, and when PHP 7 was released, RunKit, there was just so much work to be done and still to be done. Um, so there's a bunch of limitations that you can and can't do um, with RunKit. And so they made a port for 7. That's still being worked on, but the one I started to use is called Softmox, and it's, it doesn't require any native extensions. It's just regular PHP code that's using eval, but it goes through all your functions and replaces them. I'm trying to uh, fix two limitations there, or just one primarily one is, and they just can't add new code, any new objects or functions or methods and stuff like that uh, in it. If you're changing existing functions or methods, you can get it to reload, but uh, for, for the time being, it's not working. The other is it doesn't support Windows for whatever reason. I add uh, branched out, made a fork. When I finish that, I'm going to do a pull request and see if they can get that back into their code, code base. Um, other than that, you know, here's some PHP code of how it looks. Pretty generic. I copied it from them and just made some minor tweaks. Um, I do have autocomplete available, so uh, it's stubbed out. You can just include, drop that folder, or probably do like a composer install at some point as well um, to get autocomplete information on the API itself. Um, and then the Windows DLL that you can have uh, in there and install as well. Um, there are some remarks with this. One is that I don't specifically follow 100% all their function calls, so I give them different names, not different names, but I chop up the name so you're not having to call the entire whole name or it's at least namespaced. So when you're going in, you're trying to get uh, information about, you know, what can I draw? What's the window function that I have available to me? You don't have to keep going to... Um, the Raylib website or whatever I create, they can get all that information there. So here's here's that. If I wanted to do draw, I can get all my draw functions as well. Um, so yeah, that's where that's at. The DLL, uh, if you've ever worked uh, on Windows with PHP, and basically you just install um, 
it toss it into your ext folder and then um, you load up your php 9i and if you've never had one then you got to set up this extension directory just to show that to work and then there's a relib uh, extension that you add for for that and then you can use it uh, i'm trying to make that uh, kind of just dead easy if you want to get started and so i'm i'm working on my own installer that will install basically php with relib preload it uh, and some other native extensions that would be helpful for game development um, and I'm going to be renaming the php.exe and so on. So this way, if you have an existing PHP installation, that it's not going to you know, clobber it. And it's making you know changes to your environmental variables. Um, so if you're you know if you're worried about it damaging your computer, hopefully you should not do anything to it. Um, there is kind of one glaring kind of uh, limitation, not really limitation, but just like issue that a PHP program may run into, and that is, it has to do with um, how, because everything's an object, um, assignment is a little tricky. Um, I think it was in my games. All right, so normally with PHP arrays, uh, you'll have, you just say like equals, like aim point equals player's position, um, and it's fine. But in in object-oriented programming code, if you're tossing an object and you say, what this object equals this object, you're actually linking it. You're not actually making a duplicate of it. So you have to toss in clone. And again, it's not very obvious. So you'll probably be programming along thinking it's just like a PHP array is always copying it. No. So <coughs> you'll be changing the, the player's position and then all of a sudden the aim point is going on. Uh, like an example I was running into uh, when working on this was that the ball point, the ball's position, was the same position as the player, so the player to be thrown with the ball. Um, let's see where. So the ball would take in the position, and the position was of the player. Um, and yeah, it, it, it was the ball, the, the player would be thrown with the ball. Uh, so that was kind of hilarious to see. Um, other than that, uh, there's some uh, properties that are read only that should tell you if you, you're trying to use it, but also it should be in on this stub the autocomplete information if it's a read only or not. Um, yeah, other than that, there's not really too much else. The only other gripe I would have is that it just takes a lot of uh, a lot of effort and stuff like that. Um, the reason why you don't see a lot of C extensions in PHP is simply because it, it takes so much effort, uh, way more effort than Python. And way, way more effort than Node.js or anything else like that. Um, and it, even though it has some good characteristics in the language itself and performance, um, it's just not a compelling enough time to spend all that. Everyone's using, even in some of the ones I'm seeing, they're just using um, auto generators because there's you know 400 plus functions that need to be mapped and, and thought about and uh, handled. If you're not using an auto generator, um, it's kind of hard to support Relib in that in that regard, and so a lot of people are doing that. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's Relib. Uh, that's my extension I'm working on. Um, Relib three is coming out soon. There's going to be a lot of 3D functionality in it. It's still not a game engine, so I don't expect to be making 3D games um, without doing a whole bunch of work, anyways. But for 2D, it is well more. Uh, you know, so many function calls in there to, to handle everything you need. Uh, there's a GUI. Uh, it, it, whenever I can get to support it. And in PHP, 2D game is fairly dropping a bucket for that type of uh, you know language and situation. Uh, I have this thing running on like my Linux machine, which is like a 1.0 gigahertz um, AMD four or six of them, something like that. Some super old computer, really low, and it still runs at 60 frames per second. And so yeah, you can definitely make some 2D games out of this.